Hello everyone. Welcome to Such Work 206. I am going to do a series of three videos uh, to keep you informed on what's expected in this particular course. The first section of the video is going to be uh, discussing the syllabi uh, for Social Work 206. The course title is The Influence of Sexual Factors on Behaviors. So within this, we're going to have a number of assignments that we are going to be working with as we uh, complete this course. So let's start by reviewing the syllabus. Of course, as you look at the syllabus, it's Social Work 206, and it's three credit hours, and I've already given you the title. So I want each of you to actually take time and read the course prescription. Uh, below that, you'll see that uh, the director of the Social Work program is Henry Hyatt, and as your instructor, you'll find my contact information uh, listed below that. Uh, I can be contacted at area code 843-345-2224. I also have my email there. Uh, since this is an online course, I recommend that each student actually uh, call me if you want to discuss any particular things within the course. Sometimes when you send me emails, you leave out important information that would bring clarity for me to give you a uh, uh, clear answer to your question. So uh, I recommend that you give me a call. Feel free to call me anytime. Just leave a message if you do not get me and I will return your call as soon as possible. Uh, the textbook for the course is listed below. Uh, of course, this is an ebook for this particular course and when we get into Blackboard, I'll talk a little bit about where you can locate the ebook for this particular particular course, but each of you would have to click on the ebook uh, and actually sign in it into the course. Uh, there are some activities in ebook that you can complete if you choose to. Uh, I have provided everything you need for this particular course that would help you uh, with this process. As you look at the learning objectives, I always tell students to read the learning objectives because this is what helps you when you start thinking about completing a resume uh, for a particular job. And some of the learning criteria within the learning objectives can be uh, added to your uh, basically resume. So you can see you have a midterm and a final. You have a topic paper that address an issue on uh, sexual influence behaviors. Uh, you get to choose the topic. I do not select a topic for you. However, I will give you acceptance for a particular topic. If you feel you want to discuss your particular topic with me, that's fine. Uh, what I always advise students to do is actually look at the chapters and choose a topic from the chapter uh, to actually write your paper. I will provide you with a sample copy of a paper on the Getting Started page, and I'll talk a little bit about that when we get to Blackboard. You also see that uh, your midterm and final, you have to achieve a 75% or higher. You have discussions that you will be addressing in this particular course. You also, if you're a social work student, required to do a pre and post test, and you're going to complete a topic paper which also have a 75% or higher uh, grade requirement to be successful uh, with this particular course. As we move on down with the methodology section of the paper, as you read the methodology, you'll see that the method for requiring achievement of this course objectives, uh, it will demonstrate knowledge and understanding of applications of the course material through completion of assignments, test and evaluation. So let's talk a little bit about your written paper. Okay, so you have to provide a professionally written research paper in APA format, not MLA, APA format, on issues associated with the influence of sexual factors on behavior. The paper must be uh, five to seven pages. Of course, with APA style, if you're doing five pages, you're gonna also have a cover page, an abstract, to include reference page. So you're looking at eight if you're writing five source data papers. If you have seven, you add three to that, you're gonna have equivalency of 10 papers. 
APA requires that you do a cover page, an abstract, and a reference page that's not included into your five to seven pages. So for the first part of your paper, you're going to have an introductory. In, in other words, you're going to introduce the topic that you're going to discuss and how it is relevant uh, to the study on how sexual uh, factors influence behavior. Uh, you should have at least one page of this to build a, a foundation for your, your topic. The second part of the paper, which you're going to have a heading that addresses who and how, uh, you're going to introduce your population that's impact and describe how they are affected uh, to include uh, a history of how it has been handled in the past. So we know that we just passed the law with same-sex marriage. So you want to talk about some of the things, if you were to choose this topic, you would be discussing some of the things that uh, come into conflict with uh, couples who were uh, not married or couldn't be married because of, the, you know, there wasn't any law. Now that the law passed, uh, there are requirements that accepted. In other words, with the law being passed and same-sex couple marriages, uh, one of the parties can make determinations on our decisions for that, for the other. Uh, that's one of the things that the law included. On the third part, and, and when you do the second part, you're going to do at least three pages of that. So you have one in the introductory, three in that. Uh, and so if you're looking at doing a conclusion, uh, how does uh, the future of this uh, issue looks? So you're going to be looking at your topic and talking about what does it look like for the future uh, for people in this uh, uh Topic, in other words, with same-sex marriage. So what does it look like for the future? We know that some states, even though we have laws, some states do still don't abide by the law with same-sex marriage. They're trying to get around it. So that's some of the things that could be impacted with the future. So just be mindful when you write this paper, and I want you to uh, completely think about your topic. Uh, I always tell students to be interested in a topic that they're willing to uh, write about and they want to learn a little bit about uh, a particular topic. It makes it easier for you to actually write the paper. Here again, this is where I tell all students, please utilize the library to assist you with writing this paper. Uh, they can help you with APA format. They won't write the paper for you. They won't uh, give you any ideas on how you can make it uh, different. However, they will review your paper and see if it meets APA standards to include uh, your missing uh, one portion of the paper. So when I look at your paper, I'm going to look for you to have a, a header that says introduction. And under the introduction, you're going to write me one full page or a page and a half of that particular topic. And then when you go on to the second part of your paper, you're going to talk a little bit about who and and how. Uh, so you're going to do an introductory of your population describing how they're affected and who's actually being affected and how they're being affected. Uh, the third part is just basically the conclusion uh, that you're going to be writing about that looks uh, that discuss what it looks like for the future. So that's kind of helping you with your paper. Uh, let's look at the grading criteria. I, I must uh, stress that when you look at your discussions, your assignments, uh, your your online participation, that's 25% of your grade. So if you miss four or five discussions, well, you're already going to be in you know, in somewhat difficult situation trying to achieve what you're trying to achieve in the course. I know all students are expected to, to make an A on this, uh, in this course, but sometimes uh, that's not possible if you're not doing the work, uh, doing the work to the standards that's needed. I'll talk a little bit about your discussions and assignments when we get into the Blackboard part of the, the recording. Uh, you have a midterm and final. So if you fail a midterm, uh, you know that's going to impact your grade. It still doesn't mean that you're going to fail the course if you fail a midterm or final. It just means that you won't get all of that 25%. But if you did the discussion and you got 25% there and you did the paper and you got 25 there, that's 50%. So if you 
if you fail the midterm or final, you're still going to get a percentage of the score. And then if you uh, achieve uh, 100 on your final or the midterm, that's another 25. So there you already have 75%. Most of the times in this particular course, students fail to complete assignments or do assignments to standards. Uh, and so they usually withdraw from this course because they couldn't keep up in the beginning. That's why I always do these recordings to let you know that it's important that you uh, follow the information I provide with you on Blackboard on the Getting Started page. You take a look at everything, print it out, and actually, re, you know, do the research, do the work that's required. And so uh, some of my students are very successful in this course. Some of my students uh, come out of this course with an A, uh, some, some a B, uh, and some fail. And, and basically, I'm going to be truthful. Uh, some just don't do the work, and they just wait to the last minute and try to withdraw. And it's, it's usually late. I always try to keep students informed. If I see that you're not doing the work, I will email you and ask you what's going on. Give me a call. Uh, and sometimes when I see your grades are not making it to the standards that it should early on, I usually tell students maybe it's best that you withdraw and take this course at another time. So I, I monitor students' performance very closely. The next part of the syllabus basically look at your grades. So 90 to 100 is, is, is an A. Uh, a B is 80 to 89. Of course, you see what a C is and an F. I mean a D. And anything below that is an F. I normally try to uh, advise students to withdraw from the course ahead of time uh, to avoid receiving an F. Uh, no instructor like to give students an F. But if you're not doing the work and you fail to uh, do what you need to withdraw or drop the course in a timely manner, that could be a problem for you. If you have any questions about anything in the course, feel free to call me, as I said before, and we can talk about it. Uh, some of you I may may know, uh, you have taken the course with me before, and those who are new, uh, reach out to the peers that uh, basically have taken a course with me before, they can kind of help you with what I look for. But just be advised that I, I usually do that throughout the course. When you post your discussion, I usually give you feedback letting you know you failed to reference your discussion, uh, which could be centered around plagiarism. So I require that students basically uh, support anything that they're submitting to me with a reference. Okay, as you look be below that, you have your limestone policy, uh, college policies. So there's a policy on attendance, withdrawal, uh, academic in integrity, and that's basically what I was talking about by plagiarism. Those of you who have a disability statement, uh, I, I may already have an email about that, so feel free to talk to me about uh, what's difficult for you or what you're having problem with and we can have a, a plan put in place to kind of assist you with that. Uh, this is an online course, so just be mindful that you won't have accessibility of me uh, in courses with, such as in courses with Collaborate. So you are basically ensuring that you're reading the material and, and doing the work. Uh, as we move on down, you have the statement of non-discrimination. So I recommend that everybody uh, take the time and actually read the syllabus to actually ensure that you have an understanding uh, of the syllabi. As I told you before, when we get to Blackboard, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that and let you know where things are in Blackboard. Uh, it's up to each student to understand when things are due. Uh, and not email me and ask me when your paper is due because I would have already provided that to you in your syllabi. I would already provide that to you in the course uh, outline schedule. And so we'll be talking about those things as we uh, move through the course. Uh, so take time to actually read the syllabus and, and so that you can have a clear understanding of what's expected of you. Again, as I said before, students have completed this course with A. 
Uh, sometimes students have the belief that they have to have an A. You do not have to have an A to pass this course, but you have to pass the course to avoid taking the course again. So if you didn't get an A, then I, I ask students to take a look at, at what you did and what you didn't do. Because I will be looking at the work that you're performing and are you performing it in a timely manner? Okay, as we move on down the syllabus, it talks a little about, about uh, what's expected of you in the social work program. Uh, so take the time to read the syllabi, the syllabi in detail so that you can have a clear understanding. I recommend that you write down any questions uh, you may have after you have reviewed the syllabus and we can talk about it uh, via uh, phone or, as I said, by emailing me. But I recommend that you call me so I'll know specifically uh, what you wanted to discuss. I always ask students to, uh, when they do call me, be near a computer so we can look at it together. Sometimes students will call me while they're at work and want to talk about a particular assignment and they forgot uh, what assignment or where the assignment was located. So I usually ask students to be by a, a computer when you have questions, uh, when you call me and we can talk about it because I can look at it and you can be looking at the same thing and, and we can be on the same, uh, should I say, uh, point. So just make sure that you're doing those things uh, to ensure that things are done. Uh, this course also have a pre and post test. Of course, if you're a social work student, it's very important that you do the pre and the post. Don't worry about what you get on the pre because when you get to go through the course, you will do much better on the post. I also tell students when you take the pre, you might want to print it out. And that way you can go back and look at the questions that was asked of you in the pre. And you can research later on whether you had the correct answer or not. I will get feedback when you get the pretest. Uh, it will tell me you made a certain percentage. And like I said, I, I don't really look for students to get 100 on the pre, uh, uh, get all the pretests right. Uh, of course, I do look for students to show some kind of improvement once they go through the course on the post test. So here again, I recommend that you print out uh, the pretest and go back later on and go through the textbook and, and see if you can find the answers uh, to the pre pretest. And then at the end of the course, when you get ready to take the post test, uh, you will already have an idea of what each one of the questions were asked of you. It's important for social worker students to do this. This is one of the requirements that's measured by CSWE uh, to ensure that we maintain a accreditation. Of course, you know we are coming up uh, on accreditation soon, and, and so the work that you're doing in this particular course will be looked at at a later date. So after uh, talking to you about the syllabus and uh, covering some of the important things within the syllabus, it's important for you to actually read the syllabus so that you can have a clear understanding. So I'm going to go ahead and end this session of the syllabus, and then my next session would be talking about uh, the course schedule, uh, which is the second part of the syllabus. So you'll have a recording that deals with that also.